Yo, what's good, YouTube, man? It's Gabe with the Fan TV, man. Back at you another video at the content. If you really go ahead and smash that like button on the content channel, go ahead and subscribe. So, we're going to do the Ravens versus Bucks game preview. Midweek game, so, you know, I'm here by myself doing it, so we're going to get this done. Um, and it's looking like it's going to be a war of attrition, man, because both sides are coming in injured. Um, the Bucks seem to have a lot of injuries going on, so we're just going to go through the Bucks injuries real quick before we get started. So... Antoine Winfield Jr. out. Sean Murphy Bunting out. Carlton Davis out. Russell Gage out. Cameron Braid out. Okay. So as far as Winfield, Bunting, and Carlton Davis, that's three of their top cornerbacks. And there's another cornerback that's out as well. Sorry, well, uh, three of their top defensive backs because Antoine Winfield Jr. is a safety. But they have four out of their top six DBs are out. So the Ravens are going to be going against a lot of backup defensive backs. Um, Cam uh, Cameron Braid. Was they starting tight end? He's out. Russell Gage, one of the wide receivers, out. Uh, Mike Evans is limited. Julio Jones is a game time decision, and Shaq Mason, their guard, is also limited. So the Bucks got a lot going on as far as the injury front goes. And in terms of the Ravens, Calais Campbell has been ruled out with an illness. Um, yeah, they didn't really get much details other than that. Just just an illness. Uh, maybe if this game was played like on a Sunday or a Monday, he might have played. But since the game happened so fast on Thursday, he's out. Um, so Mark Andrews did not practice any day this week. Now that, that could mean that he's just going to not practice and suit up for the game, or it could mean we don't see Mark Andrews this week. Both possibilities are in the air. All right. Now, as far as everybody else on the injury, Ravens injury report, excuse me, was questionable. So, but, but Bateman, Ben Cleveland, Marlon Humphrey, Marcus Peters, uh, Ronnie Stanley were all four participants in practice today which means they're most likely play tomorrow, okay? Gus Edwards and Josh Bynes were both limited. Gus Edwards, no surprise, coming off of, you know, his injury in his first game back. You know, they're probably just taking it easy with him in practice. Josh Bynes went down a couple times versus the Browns, so they're probably just playing the safe with him as well. I would imagine Gus plays. Josh Bynes, we'll see, but I'm thinking he'll play if he was able to practice, okay? So, um, yeah, that, that, that's the Ravens injury report, okay? Now, getting into this game. Getting into this game. I'm looking at the Buccaneers. Their Russia offense, 64 yards a game, last in the NFL. Uh, 21 attempts per game, 31st in the NFL. And they're only running it for, so that's only about three yards to carry anyway. All right. Passing offense. They had, they averaged 266 yards a game, uh, six in the NFL, and their third in attempts. They throw the ball 42 times a game. So, this Buccaneers offense, even though it's going to be limited as far as not having, like, Russell Gage and they might not have Julio Jones, they're still going to have Mike Evans out there. They're still going to be a potent attack cause, just because Tom Brady's at the helm. Now, now we got to say this. Tom Brady is struggling, and we know that. They're coming off a game versus the uh, Carolina Panthers where they just lost 21-3 to the Carolina Panthers who are clearly tanking. Clearly tanking. Shipping off players. Their Panthers will probably trade some more players by the time um, this week is over with. So the Buccaneers now sit at three and four, and they're going, they're going to need a win. Even though the rest of the division is not playing really well, they're still going to need a win. So Buccaneers are going to be looking to bounce back this game for sure. And this is a big test for Ravens cornerbacks, okay? These are the kind of games that you got Marcus Peters and Marlon Humphrey for, all right? Now to, to lock up Gow and to lock up uh, Mike Evans. You're going to need them, guys, for this kind of game. Uh, but also... The defensive line. We saw Justin Houston come back last week, play a limited amount of snaps, but play dominant in the limited amount of snaps. Calais Campbell being out is a miss, but I'm not as worried about that just for the simple fact of the Ravens have Matabike. They got Travis Jones. Um, they got guys in the interior who can play and play well when called upon. So I'm not... While you while you want to see Calais how they're playing, it's not the biggest deal in the world that he's not, if that makes any sense, right? Um... So you want to see Oway get after the QB. And also, hey, Patrick Queen. Patrick Queen is one of the best blitzing linebackers in, in the NFL. And you want to see him keep progressing and keep doing things like that. And also, he's just playing well as an overall linebacker in general. All right, uh, dropping in the coverage, um, stopping the run. We saw him blow up two runs in the back before the first Kareem Hunt. But for this week, his skill set is going to be really tested as far as what he's going to do right there in coverage. All right. Um, if you know anything about Tom Brady, he lets the pick on a mismatch. So, if he feels like he could pick on Patrick Queen in any kind of way, he'll probably try it. That's up to Queen to step up to the task and really handle that, okay? Um, now, for this uh, Buccaneers offense, um, we know what they have. So, like, Leonard Fournette is a threat in the backfield, but 
he's been kind of relegated to a pass catching option just because the Buccaneers offensive line is so decimated, so bad, just from the start of the season, pretty much. They had multiple guys go on IR and miss the season. So the Ravens, um, they can't allow this Buccaneers team to run the ball on them. Now, they don't run the ball a lot, right? So when they do, you have to stop them, okay? If you can make the Buccaneers one-dimensional, like any football team, it makes the game easier because you know what's coming. So the Ravens, even though the Buccaneers don't run the ball a lot, they cannot fall asleep and let this run game get going. And now you have to worry about multiple things and something that you probably wasn't even fully uh, worried about coming into the game. And now that's all of a sudden that's getting going. So they can't fall asleep on the run game. They got to still be prepared. All right. Now, on the flip side of things, um, let's see. The Russian defense for the for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers is they average they give up 118 yards a game, which is tied for 16th in the NFL, so dead middle. But the strength of their team, 190 yards a game allowed in the passing game, which is sixth in the NFL. So a top six passing defense. But as we just said by the injury report, four of their top six DBs are going to be out of this game. So the Ravens are not just playing backups; they're playing the backups backup. Okay. Now, we know that last week that Lamar Jackson only threw the ball 16 times. And we know that he probably wasn't too happy about that. But, you know, that game versus the Browns was an all-around effort as far as not making enough plays. You could say it was bad play calls. Uh, it was some poor offensive line play when it came to blocking on the DNs. And, uh, you know, maybe some bad rush wider receivers as well. So, the Ravens have it as a collective. It's a short week. Have to be sharper. And this is the kind of game that they need to take advantage of. This Buccaneers team is severely injured and uh, with key players. Now, they still have guys, I believe, like, you know, like a Darren White, Levante David. They're, they still have good players on the field, Vita Vey and things like that. But the Ravens have to be able to take advantage of this team and win this game, okay? Now, last week, like I said, versus the, versus the uh, well, not even last week, a couple days ago, really, but uh, versus the Browns, you know, the Ravens ran the ball 40-plus times. All right, now... Will we see that again? It's possible. Uh, this Buccaneers rushing attack, I mean, a rushing defense is in the middle of the pack. So we know a great moment can draw up in the run game, and we can see a lot of more um, rushing attempts than passing attempts. That's a very real possibility, right? But also, they have to be able to get this passing game in rhythm. Uh, last, last game, Lamar Jackson had, I believe it was close to five or six pass attempts, and we're talking about deep into the second quarter. Um... We can't do that to ourselves. We can't do that to the team just because you... The same thing I'm saying for the Bucks on the other end of being one-dimensional as far as them throwing the ball all the time. The Ravens can't be one-dimensional and then when it's time to drop back and pass, now there's no rhythm. People are dropping passes. They don't know where to go because they haven't been throwing the ball that much, right? So they have to find a rhythm and establish the passing game early, and they have to do it often, all right? Um, 16 is not enough. They need to pass the ball at least... 25 to 30 times this game, okay? And you can run the ball the same amount of times, you know? An uh, even distribution, a balanced offense is what the Ravens should be striving for. And um, just out of whack, 40 plus runs, 16 passes, it's not, it's not the distribution that they need, okay? Now, as far as this game, um, I'm, I'm looking at the wide receivers, honestly. Um, if Especially if Andrews is down and can't go, he did not practice, like I said, this entire week. If he cannot go, uh, that means likely or Josh, more likely Josh Oliver is going to get to start at tight end, okay? Now, Josh Oliver is a fine tight end. You know, he's doing well as a tight end number two, but as a lead guy, I don't know about that. So that leads me to, at least look at the guys on the outside. Bateman, Bateman can win. Duvernay can win, but they got to catch the ball. Duvernay hasn't had that kind of problem, but we know what Sean Bateman had. So far this year, he's had an issue with drops. Now, versus Tampa team. Carlton Davis is out. Sean Murphy Bunton is out. I know for a fact that's that two top corners, okay? Um, Antoine Winfield Jr. is a top safety in this league. He's out. There are going to be matchups. There's going to be plays and opportunities for them to make it. And when their number is called, they got to help the quarterback out to catch the football and get open when when, it, when the time is needed. So those are the guys I'm looking at on offense. And um, honestly, we've been standing for a couple weeks. You know, it's time for Lamar Jackson to have a Lamar Jackson kind of game. Uh, he just hasn't seemed to be in rhythm um, really for the last couple of weeks. So if he can get back to that, the Ravens should be able to win this game. Like I said, this Buccaneers team is lost to a Panthers team that's tanking. Uh, just they don't see, they seem out of whack. They seem out of sync. All right. Uh, they're three and four. You know, you would think that last week they would have ran over the um, 
the Carolina Panthers, and they didn't. They fell completely flat, all right? The Panthers aren't, every NFL team has some talent on it, but the Panthers are a team that's trying to get rid of a lot of their talent. So the fact that they lost that game kind of says a lot about where the Buccaneers are right now currently in their season. And the Ravens must take advantage of that, okay? Um, so as far as offense, like I said, the big X factors I'm looking for is the wide receivers. The top two guys, Ken Bateman and Duvernay, get off. Um, as far as uh, the defense for the Ravens, um, I think I already named them, you know, Patrick Queen. But really, I'm looking at the two guys on the outside, uh, Marlon Humphrey, Marcus Peters. Can they, can they lock up a Mike Evans? Can they lock up a Chris Godwin? And really make it hard for Brady and make him have to throw the ball to somebody else, okay? Um, this pass rush is going to have to get after the quarterback. This, this bus offensive line is not good. Now, Brady might get rid of the ball quickly, sure, but this offensive line is not good. Um, so the Ravens have everything that they need in place to win this game. Now, we know last time the Ravens played on a Thursday night game, uh, last year, it did not go well. It's a game that they were uh, su supposed to win as well, uh, playing the Dolphins, and obviously that didn't happen. All right. So the Ravens have to uh, come out this year on a Thursday, ready to play, and they can very well win this game and move on to 5-3 and three and actually have back-to-back -back wins for the first time this year. All right. Which is surprising to say the Ravens have gone on a pattern of winning one, losing one, winning one, losing one. All right. It's time to break that and actually start the time to stack wins together. The Ravens' schedule, and when you just look at the names, it's a lot of teams that are beatable and a lot of games that they should win. And uh, to me, this Buccaneers game, with all the injuries that they have, everything that's going on with the squad, uh, they should win this game. All right. So that that's my Ravens versus uh, Buccaneers preview. It's going to be a war of attrition. Who can overcome the injuries um, and can strength on strength, right? The Ravens. I believe, are set up to stop the pass. Can they stop this Buccaneers pass again, which is what we know Tom Brady wants to do? Can they stop it? All right, and that's, and that's it for right there. And then as far as the Ravens' offense goes, uh, the Buccaneers are missing a lot of defensive backs. All right, can this pass game take advantage of it? We know the run game is going to be there, but can they make them fear the pass? And that's what I'm looking out for. Let me know what you're looking out for in this game uh, tomorrow. And I'll talk about it in the comments, all right? It's your boy Gabriel. Just know the fan TV. I'm out.